Hey, what's going on guys? So in today's video, I'm gonna answer some questions I got via email. I just figured I'd do it over video in case other people have the same questions. Uh, you know, I get emails every day now from people that are not doing very well on a low fat, high fruit diet. Uh, they're in, in states of degeneration and malnourishment and it's only getting progressively worse every day. And they're under the belief that they're detoxing and healing when long term it's just going to cause more and more damage uh, you know this video is not for people that are doing well on a plant-based diet or a high fruit diet it's just for the people that didn't find their remedy by practicing th these ways of eating or have maybe been following you know detox protocols spending lots of money on herbal formulas fasting and fruit and they're just getting progressively worse and they're just becoming more and more sensitive to certain foods all right, let's jump right into it. So here are some of the questions. Uh, do I have kidney filtration? So do I have kidney filtration since I've been on a, a carnivorous way of eating? Yes, absolutely. My kidneys filter better now than they ever have. Uh, kidney filtration is when we see sediment in our urine. You can pee into a jar and let it sit for 24 hours. In the bottom, you'll see your sediment. This is uh, an indicator that our kidneys are filtering and excreting lymphatic waste, cellular waste. Uh, Dr. Robert Morris is a huge proponent of kidney filtration to make sure that the body is you know, healing and cleansing. Uh, do I intermittent fast now? At this point in time, no. I have experienced one meal a day intermittent fasting uh, and I did totally fine with it, but I'm not gonna recommend that other people fast or participate in only one meal a day. I, don't, I definitely don't believe it to be necessary to only eat one meal a day or to intermittent fast. Uh, different ways of eating work differently with different people. And so I just encourage you to find a way of eating that works best for you and is the most appropriate. You know, some people work, do really well with a big breakfast and, a, you know, and not eating dinner or a light dinner and vice versa. So, uh, just try to try to listen to your own body and find what works for you. So many of us get caught up in trying to follow what other people people are doing because we want to achieve health like that that we believe that they have, and this uh, can be very psychologically damaging because we feel that there's something wrong with us rather than just needing to make a change in the way that we eat. It's, does my poo smell bad? Well, it doesn't smell good, but it's not, uh, it's, it's not any worse. I'd feel that it's probably a little stinkier with the increase in cooked animal foods because there's going to be a, a bit more um, waste excreted. Um, I'd say my poo smelled the least when I would just do periods of eating purely fruit. Does my breath smell bad? No, my breath does not smell bad. Um, I would say that my breath probably smells less bad now than it did when I was on a plant-based diet. When I was on a plant-based diet, it would tend to kind of smell fermenty. And now I don't really notice a difference even when I wake up in the morning. Uh, did I take small bites when I first started eating meat? Uh, just for the first couple meals. Um, but I don't really focus on taking small bites. I just focus on chewing my food and make sure that it's thoroughly masticated so it digests, absorbs, and becomes utilized more easier. If I can't touch raw meat, can I eat cooked? Yes, of course. Uh, prepare it however you like it. If you want to lightly cook it, although I will say that overcooking it could probably really inhibit the amount of nutrients in the food and probably create um, some less desirable issues such as um, you know like dehydration it just becomes like really dry like for me um, even if I cook eggs I just very very lightly cook them and it's almost like a soup uh, it seems to work better for me with the more moisture content in the food um, this is also what I found on a plant-based diet as well you know like one of the benefits of a fruit-based diet is that we're getting so many so much liquid that um, you know, hydration is probably not going to be much of an issue. Whereas on this type of a diet, I could see hydration as being more of an issue because there's less water content in the food. 
the more that we cook it. But like I said, just find a way that works best for you. Would an all cooked chicken diet work? I would say no long term, it would not work because we're not getting all of our essential nutrients and like fat soluble vitamins. Um, you could definitely include it in a meal for sure, but I wouldn't say do it for every meal. Uh, chicken's relatively high in protein, low in fat, and uh, this doesn't seem to work very well for most people practicing like a carnivorous or ketogenic diet. They usually do better with a higher amount of fat than protein, but you just want to make sure to get enough fat because that's where we're getting uh, a lot of our fat soluble vitamins. I would highly recommend including organ meats such as heart and liver. Um, eggs are also a good source. You know, I also like to include, you know, fatty cuts of beef, salmon. All right, do I enjoy this diet? Yes, I thoroughly enjoy this diet. <clears throat> and for other people that have uh, given me their feedback, just starting it, say that the feeling of satiation is priceless and they feel very content after they eat, like their body was, you know, they feel much more nourished and not just like stimulated um, in their taste buds. Because when I was on a plant-based diet, I would just eat and eat and eat and I wouldn't find satiation. Just that feeling of feeling full but still hungry at the same time and like thinking about food even after I just ate a huge, you know, meal, like it's, it's very unpleasant. Does it get boring? No, I would say it doesn't get boring because once our body is satiated and it's content, then I don't really think about food as much. A huge factor in my experience is just the adjustment phase, you know, being consistent for two to three weeks and allowing the body to get adjusted to it. And then psychologically, anytime we start a new habit, uh, you know, just making sure to be consistent for the first two to three weeks really helps us to transition into making that a long-term habit. And so I would definitely recommend, uh, you know, just giving it a little bit of time, that adjustment phase. Uh, you know, there's, you know, some people experience diarrhea or um, some other slight issues in the first two to three weeks. There's definitely a major shift in the gut microbiome and, and there can be the elimination of a lot of with a lot of um, you know bacteria, especially overgrows within the small intestine. I know a lot of people are reversing their bacterial overgrowth with uh, carnivorous ways of eating or ketogenic diets um, because they're not feeding that bacteria that's already overgrown. They're essentially starving it and then it's dying off and getting eliminated. Um, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up you know, subscribe for more content and put some questions down below for me. I'll, uh, you know, answer them in a video or just uh, email me at dougavorgan at gmail.com. You know, so many of us, uh, including myself, were suffering on a plant-based diet and have found a remedy. So like I said, guys, I just want us all to find our remedy and find something that works for us long-term to where we don't end up causing more damage than good. Thank you guys so much, stay tuned.